It's time to talk about my top 10 favorite films so far for 2024, a year that is kind of a weird one. Like, we definitely have some incredible gems this year, and then we have some very mediocre films, and then we have some quite shit, honestly. But today we're talking about the best. If you want to see my worst of list, we'll be talking about those either tomorrow or a couple days from now. You'll definitely see that link somewhere around here, or just click on my channel to go see if it's up already. But with that said, let's dive into the top 10 best films so far for 2024. Coming in at my number 10 is Hitman. Hit Man is an incredible Netflix film that only gets better on rewatches. I think at this point I've watched it about three times, and each time it has gotten better for me. I think the first time I watched it, I thought it was pretty good, but didn't live up to the expectations of what some people were saying coming out of the festival circuit last year. But every time I've gone back to it, I've noticed something more and more to it. And I think personally for me, this is one of my favorite scripts so far of the year. I won't say it's my favorite one, but I also think Glenn Powell's absolutely just phenomenal in this. As in terms of a performance, it's probably my favorite actor performance this year. Actress is saved for someone else for, that will be coming up, but... I love what Glenn Powell did in this. I think Hitman is such a fun, darker romantic comedy that is now on Netflix. And I think the whole idea of a man pretending to be a hitman who ends up kind of falling for someone is just irresistible. The chemistry between the two leads is dynamic and some of the best chemistry I've seen in a film in years. And overall, if you still haven't seen Hitman, what are you doing? Coming in at my number nine is another romantic comedy, but more on the lighter side, and that is The Fall Guy, a movie that I'm kind of just a little bit obsessed with in terms of its entire world building, in terms of its characters, in terms of the chemistry, and in terms of it kind of feeling a spiritual sequel to Tropic Thunder, which was a film about making a movie, but it going terribly wrong, and Fall Guy being a love letter to stuntmen, but also in terms of seeing everything behind the scenes of how a film gets made, and you actually diving into all that, and all the stunt flair, and Ryan Gosling is just a dynamic, amazing action hero. Emily Blunt is awesome. Winston Duke is great. Aaron Taylor Johnson is an asshole in here, but he's fantastic, and overall, every time... I've just thought about Fall Guy. It's one of those movies that I wish I would have had more time to go see again in the theaters. I cannot wait till this is on home video so I can purchase it on Blu-ray and watch it whenever I want. I just loved all the action sequences in here and just overall had an utter blast watching Fall Guy. It's again one of those films that I didn't expect to fall in love with. I expected to like it because I'm pretty, pretty much like most David Leach films. But for me to come out and be like, that might be my favorite one so far from him. And the way that it nails again on that head of being a love letter to stuntmen, but of course also being a fantastic action film at the same time. And also splicing in a fantastic romantic comedy in there. It, it just delighted me. Like the humor in here was great and I could absolutely have needed a thousand more Fall Guy movies, and it sucks we will probably never get those. Now we jump into my number eight, which is Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, which I found to just be an absolute incredible forward path for the Apes franchise, and a film that I was kind of genuinely worried about. The original Caesar trilogy was certainly special. It wasn't a film trilogy that I thought we were needing, or a reboot or remake that I absolutely thought was necessary, but when I jumped in and saw what the first film did, and I thought that this is a great evolution, but I would like a little bit more of the apes, and then Matt Reeves takes over the franchise with Dawn and, of course, War, and goes into such another avenue to where I look at that trilogy and go, that was one of the best trilogies of the last decade, maybe of all time, and also say Dawn and War are flat out the two best Planet of the Apes films ever made. How do you surpass that? or even live up to the hype of it. And Wes Ball comes in the joint, and I, I like the Maze Runner movies, but I didn't know what to expect. I stayed away from the trailers, I didn't want to get my expectations too high, and I watched the film and I went, wow, that was great. And I still think about it to this day certain elements from that film and exactly what they were setting up that I really can't wait to see what they do of again more. And I think this film had a couple different things that they needed to do. One, it needed to establish new characters that they made me care about and furthermore loved. 
just as much as Caesar, if not almost as much as Caesar. And I think with Noah, they about did that. To introduce a really cool character that I loved, which was like the new version of Caesar. And one of the things that I wasn't expecting is 300 years after Caesar's death, what do these apes, how does the world look? How do they view Caesar's path? And how certain apes view Caesar as a different thing. Some people don't even know who Caesar was. And the, all the wording and everything that he said, apes strong together, those are big messages that they lead into here for us to really indicate what is going on. And even the main human character, played by Freya Allen, who I thought was great, introduces some interesting elements that, again, can't wait to see what they do for the future. As the start of a trilogy and the start of a kickoff, it is very epic in terms of what they are playing here, and as well as seeing where the apes are now in this time frame and showcasing what could be coming in the future. Is there certain things that maybe I'm a little bit worried about in the future? Sure, but as a first movie, it nailed it across the board, and I can't wait to see what West Ball does with The Legend of Zelda movie next. Now, my number seven is The Bike Riders, a movie that was delayed from last year, and it finally came out this year, even switched studios that it was coming out by, and I overall really liked the movie, a movie that I wasn't totally anticipating. Like, it looked cool. It had a cool concept. I've heard great buzz. I heard, like, from one of my close friends, Ren Geekness, I heard it was the coolest film he watched last year at one of the film festivals. And I watched it, and I was like, yeah, it's pretty damn cool. In fact, I loved it. And my only issue with the movie was I found it to actually be too short. I could have experienced more and more time with these characters, with the situation, with the evolution of the bike club that we see in here. And I think that's one of the things that actually I wish we would have had more of. It has very much a Goodfellas vibe, but instead of like the mob scenario, it's more of a biker gang and seeing how the biker gang actually came to be a gang. You know, at first it was just guys joking around talking about bikes and all that stuff and the way that it was actually started was quite interesting but what happens when more and more people join and more and more people decide what this club should actually be about i think it changes a lot of the dynamic and it was one thing that i wasn't anticipating austin butler is very subdued in here but he's fantastic jody comer is great and unrecognizable in here but for me, Tom Hardy might have given my favorite performance in the entire film. I love Tom Hardy. If you would have asked me 10 years ago, I would have told you he's probably my favorite actor working today. And as of lately, like he just hasn't really hit the mark for me, not in terms of like what he's done, because he's always great in every movie, but just the projects that he's decided to do. And I'm so happy that like when I watched the bike riders, I was like, this is the Tom Hardy that I love. These are the performances I love from them. These are the roles I love from him. And it was so such a refreshing take to see that. On top of that with the bike riders, Jeff Nichols, I think, crafts such an excellent bromance and in general relationship between every person in here that, again, I would have loved to even seen more of. The cast is great. Also, definitely need more Norman Reedus. I know I keep saying that I needed more of stuff, but that's just because of how much I enjoyed the film that I could have just lived in there for so long. Get into my number six, and this is a film that technically has not come out yet, but I did get to see it earlier in the first half of the year, and that is Sing Sing. Probably one of the best A24 movies of the year. Uh, not my personal favorite, but second favorite of the year so far. But this is just perfection. I mean, th this film for me was about everything that I was hoping it would be. And even just a little bit more. I, I think this is Coleman Domingo's vehicle to get nominated for an Oscar. He should be nominated for Best Actor. In fact, as of right now, I would say he should probably win. Even though I prefer Glenn Powell's performance in Hitman, this performance is stacked above that. And I can see people going after it. Um, but it's a film that I wasn't expecting. And when I watched it and was invited to the Phoenix Film Festival to watch it for opening night, I was sitting there. And I'd heard so much great buzz and I was like waiting for that moment to where it clicked for me why this film is so important and so special. And I think about midway through, there came a certain sequence between Coleman Domingo and one of the other actors in the film. And it almost nearly brought me to a tear of what they were experiencing, what they were going through and what this outlet for acting and dramatical acting can really do for some people to express themselves and maybe turn anew in their life. And Sing Sing is just a beautifully touching film that's a love letter to prisoners and this entire thing of acting and theater in this club, but also a love letter to the creatives out there. And if you haven't had this film on your radar yet, I highly recommend that you get it on there and check it out when it hits theaters. 
any week now. And now we get into my number five, which is Inside Out 2, a film that had a lot to live up to. I didn't watch the trailer for this. Um, Pixar, for many people, had been on a slump. Not personally for me. I think they're personally the best animation and just in general film studio out there. But this was a film that had a lot riding on it. It had a lot riding on it due to the box office that Pixar needed a success. And also, I just think for the public going audience, people needed to see that Pixar films need to be seen in theaters. See everything that now Pixar has gone through to finally see that they succeed with Inside Out 2, not just in terms of what it's done for the box office, but as well as for critical reception. I again think, just like I said in my review, I found that Inside Out 2 is very much the Toy Story 2 for this franchise. And I hope going forward, if they were to do another Inside Out, I think they could have climax on such an emotional ending because each of these films are emotional. The first one a little bit more because of Bing Bong, but the second film, just in terms of the anxiety and everything going on right at the end when it kind of has its depiction of an anxiety attack. And again, Inside Out 2, Toy Story 2, it's kind of, it's got a bigger adventure, grows the characters, opens up the world a little bit more, and I just absolutely loved my time with Inside Out 2. But now at my number four, we have Civil War, a film that I don't know if I ever want to watch again, but it is a film that I think everyone should at least watch once. And I found what A24 crafted here with, of course, the incredible Alex Garland. I, I think this is, it might be my second favorite of his, and it's just because Ex Machina is personally like my favorite A24 film of all time. But Civil War is right up in there. Uh, it's depiction of war and specifically journalism to war. And I like that. I know some people were disappointed that it never touched into like, well, why are they at war? What is, which side are these characters on? Journalists need to find an avenue to sometimes be neutral to both. And while there is definitely hints of which side they definitely fall on into this war, it's never depicted. It's something that I feel like you have to pick apart and guess and have your own judgment on. And that's where we'll have those conversations with. But in the fact that this is A24's biggest movie ever, Alex Garland crafted a meaningful action thriller that not just honed in some incredible set pieces, truly enough heartbreaking moments. I mean, when I watched Civil War, I sat there just going, holy crap. I mean, there's certain cuts and moments where the gunshots go off and it almost nearly gives you a heart attack or a jump scare. And Kaylee Spaney is phenomenal. Easily my favorite performance so far of hers. Kristen Dunst is fantastic. The rest of the cast, you can just go on and on about how incredible they are. But the experience that you have watching Civil War, I think is one of the best A24 has ever delivered. We get into my number three, which is Challengers. Challengers is just life. Uh, it, it's a movie that shouldn't work for a lot of different reasons, but absolutely works in every single department, whether it is its entire structure or whether it's even its entire avenue of creativity when it comes down to the script itself or even the damn score from Nine Inch Nails. Like the fact that like you look at this score and it feels like something that should be out of a straight action movie, but it plays out so phenomenally well during the tennis matches and as well during just arguments between characters. Challengers nails all that. And it's a very frustrating and toxic movie that touches on to different toxic relationships in our lives, whether it's professional, whether it's personable, whether it's friendship wise. And that's what I love about this is that while the trailers make it look like a love triangle, the best way you can put it is like this character likes this person for this reason, but actually hates this other person. This person loves this person for this reason. And maybe they hate this other person and this triangle that you kind of get there and what each character is really wanting, I think is one of the reasons that I love to revisit this movie. I love to check it out. I love to just think about it. And while it may not have been the sexiest movie that everyone saw this year, I think it is one of the most intense movies I have watched this year. And personally for me is the best script of 2024 thus far. Zendaya delivers her best performance. She should absolutely be nominated. This is my favorite performance overall for an actor or an actress of 2024 so far. Mike Feist is fantastic. Josh O'Connor is great. And Luca Guadagnino. Nino, I think may have crafted his best movie yet. Oh, my number two is Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. And I know this film didn't do great at the box office. I know some people are a little bit mixed on it. Some people love it more than Fury Road. Some people just like it as much as Fury Road. And some people just absolutely did not like the film. And for me, 
I was actually kind of taken back by Furiosa. Some days I think it's better than Fury Road. Some other days I still prefer Fury Road. But look at Furiosa as such a perfect companion piece to it. And in terms of when it comes down to a prequel, I think Furiosa is about as perfect as you can get. From what George Miller has crafted here, a lot of people, specifically like my wife, complained that Fury Road doesn't really have a story to it. And talking with a lot of people, I do see that complaint. But what I think Furiosa does is in one peace in mind Furiosa now needs to be watched with Fury Road and vice versa when I go back and want to rewatch Fury Road I'll feel like I need to watch Furiosa to get the entire story because Furiosa didn't just explore more of Furiosa which I think Anya Taylor-Joy did a fantastic job on and speaking in performances real fast Chris Hemsworth is also incredible as Dementis probably one of my favorite Chris Hemsworth performances right up there with Rush and he should be nominated. Just saying. He should absolutely be nominated for Best Supporting Actor this next Oscar season. If he's not, disappointing. But the, while they both give a great performance, what I also loved about Furiosa was the fact that it actually gave much-needed detail to the world and to Furiosa and the entire community of what this like bullet town is and what this sanctuary is and all these different little elements like in Morton Joe all get straight big development to where... Things that maybe I was a little bit lost on in Fury Road, when you go back and watch Fury Road now, it's like added. You know the history of what had happened. And while Furiosa is way longer, and I think there's one montage sequence, which I understand why they did it as I would have liked to have seen, I just can't stop thinking about Furiosa. I can't stop thinking about how brutal and how awesome the action sequences were and how thrilling it was. And even though I know where Furiosa ends at and where I expected it to be, the fact that I can still find like some heart to it all and to see where this character goes and what segments her into the same area of where she is in Fury Road. And I think if you, if you get a prequel, I think what prequels should do is not just give much needed background context, but specifically make another film better than it already was. Furiosa does that exact thing for Fury Road. My number one favorite movie of 2024 so far is Dune Part 2. Dune Part 2 is the film that I've seen the most in theaters, it's the film that I've revisited the most this year, and it's the film that I will probably continue to receive the most. And I also think it is one of the best films so far of this decade, even better than the original Dune. And I think a lot goes to say for that. Um, there's still six more months of the year. There is a possibility that something will dethrone it, but it's not a high possibility. Denis Villeneuve is personally my favorite personal working director right now. Like out of all the new ones, Martin Scorsese will always be my favorite of all time. And so maybe Denis has like a bigger filmography just like him. But if Dune Part 1 was the buildup to everything that everyone was wanting to, Dune Part 2 executes that as a perfect middling chapter and very much crafts their own Empire Strikes Back of this year, but in a different type of tone in terms of how the film ends, in terms of where all the characters are, and in terms of every single one of the things that Denis was shooting for in the first film. And I love how it feels such like a perfect homage to the thing. You could watch the first one and jump right into the second one and feel fulfilled. The performances are unlike anything else. Timothy Chalamet is phenomenal. Rebecca Ferguson, great. Zendaya, another fantastic performance. Josh Brolin, Javier Bardem, Austin Butler, Florence Pugh. The cast can go on and on from there. But Dune Part 2 is a cinematic masterpiece, just as the first one was. In terms of technical achievements, whether it's the cinematography, the score, the action, everything is just fluid. And while maybe some people were a little bit disappointed that it wasn't the straight-up action thing that everyone expected this out to be, when the action is there, it is needed, and it delivers to such a high value that I could not get enough of. I love Dune Part 2 so much, and I cannot wait to revisit it once again, probably in the next few days. That's my top 10 favorite films of 2024. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Look out for my worst films of 2024 so far. And of course, until next time, stay classy.